Tell us when your career in the law began. Well, it really began in, uh, I guess, 1969 when I was a first-year law student at the University of Baltimore. So you graduated from law school in what year? 1972. All right. And what was your first, uh, what was your first employment? What was your first job? Well, the first job was as a law clerk. And, uh, you know, in those days it was tough to get into a law firm from the University of Baltimore. Mm -hmm. I graduated first in my class and I had no offers. So I spoke to the dean, Dean Curtis, and I, he said, uh, do you know anybody who wants a clerkship? I said, yes, me. So I was sent to the uh, what is now the Mitchell Courthouse to meet Judge Albert Sklar, who I'd already known a little bit before that. But I, I had a very brief interview, at the end of which, maybe 15 minutes, I said, well, when, when will I hear? And he said, you just did. He said, uh, Dean Curtis's recommendation is good enough for me. And that was really the beginning of everything for me because Judge Sklar became my mentor. And uh, it was amazing to work for somebody like that and be behind the scenes and to see how cases were decided and also how people were treated, the, the way to treat uh, people who came before him because mm -hmm. he was just an incredible mentor. Got a call from... Uh, Ted Miller, who was a former president of the city bar, who said, I just heard that Harvey Leibowitz is resigning, so you've got to apply. The call came on my 34th birthday, November 18th, 1981, and so it was sort of an omen, right. and I applied for that, and, and I got it. All right. Now, uh, and so in 1981, you became a federal bankruptcy judge? Well, not, I wasn't sworn in until February 1 of 82, and so I've been there since then. And I've heard a rumor that there was a member of the MSBA who might have been present when you got the phone call. Well, that was the interesting thing. It was, it was just before Christmas, and Paul Carlin, who I think at the time was the executive director of the City Bar, whose office was in the same building, Courthouse East, just happened to be visiting in chambers when, uh, when the call came in. And so he was a witness to uh, the call that I got from then Chief Judge Frank Kaufman of the U.S. District Court. He asked me, uh, how would you like to be the next bankruptcy judge? And I said, uh, thank you very much. <laughs> it didn't take long. So what made you decide on a career in the law in the first place? Why well, law school and why, why law? I, I think as a child, I always wanted to be a lawyer. And of course, in the old days, you know, I had no idea what a lawyer did. I saw the TV shows like Perry Mason and the, De De the Defenders. And... Uh, in fact, I was in law school before I, I think I was even inside a courtroom. I think the thing is for all of us that nobody got where we are, those of us who were practicing or, or sitting on uh, judicial benches, without help from others. And the point of that is that you help other people come along. I've had, I guess in my career now, something like uh, 25 or 30 law clerks, and you try to instill in each of those people uh, what it means to be a lawyer, how important it is that you do your best, that you dedicate your life to serving other people. It's not a money business. Uh, it, it's The whole point of the thing is uh, you're a public servant and um, every appearance you make is a public appearance wherever you are. So you are supposed to be setting an example and helping others.